Hi, and welcome to About Tonight. I'm well-known late-night comedic television show host, Alice Fraser, and this is About About Tonight. I'm going to walk you through the smoothly oiled process of how we make the late-night show you love so much. A lot of people watch a lot of television. We don't know how many people there are or how many televisions because as with police shootings of black men in America, everyone stopped counting. But let's just say a lot of people watch a lot of television and you think, well man, well-known late night comedic television host Alice Fraser looks so glamorous and smooth and polished doing her television show and after a while you want to take a little peep behind the flaps of my curtain and find out how a late night show is made. The show starts long before the show begins in the writer's room. This is where the magic is made. People putting words together. Oh man, so many words. Good ones. The monologue. The monologue is the beginning of the late night show. It's like stand up, but not as good. You tend to run through some of the wacky headlines of the week and make jokes that your granny would think are a bit naughty, but are basically blandly non-threatening to lower class middle audiences jokes. Let's show you a bit of the monologue. So it's getting pretty rough out there in the world outside. From here we feel pretty sheltered, but all you need to do is read a bit of the internet and it's enough to make you feel like the world is ending. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are fighting a fascinating battle for the American presidency, otherwise known as not really Australia's problem. Meanwhile, in Australia a bunch of politics is probably happening, but why would you pay attention to your slightly mental aunt when your next door neighbour has just started hurling couch cushions onto his backyard barbecue and is screaming, revenge, that's America. Ford has closed its factories in Australia with around 600 Aussie workers losing their jobs. A bunch of pro-life protesters have gathered outside the factory site, insisting that the unborn cars have a right to a mother and a father. Racing car champion Dick Johnson says Ford's closure is a real disappointment, and there's a man who knows about real disappointment. His name is Dick Johnson, and he drives very fast, very loud cars. I'm sure his penis is extremely adequate. Kangaroo Island plans to wipe out about 5,000 feral cats and phase out domestic ownerships of the animals on the island over the next 15 years as part of their plan to slowly reduce the number of crazy old cat ladies in the small community. They're talking about you, Doris. According to the Feral Cat Project coordinator, Patch Hodgins, the cats were hunting and killing birds, penguins, small mammals and reptiles and it's only a matter of time before they get a taste for human flesh. Recent news from China about a bloody massacre of 19 people in a remote Chinese village by what news sources are calling a socially awkward gambling addict. I'm pretty sure murdering 19 people rises above the level of socially awkward. That is definitely weird loser territory. Whoever told him the trick to meeting people is just be yourself must feel pretty silly right now. Also, food shortages in Africa are leading to mass starvation, but we're not paying a huge amount of attention to it because that's like so 90s. A lot of late night shows are just a rolling excuse for a star with an album to show up and pretend to be having fun with a relative stranger. That's me. People love the idea that everyone in show business is friends, so the trick is to make your guests look good. Only play games they're good at and don't ask any hard questions. So how are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. I'm excited to be here. This is my band, Frank. Round of applause for Frank. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. So you've been on tour, Frank? I have a little bit. Um, I've been touring recently with the Australian Teenage Expo um, and we've been going around to a couple of schools uh, all around uh, Australia and uh, doing a couple of performances, talking about life. It's, uh, it's been good. <laughs> it's been good. What's happened to the rest of your band? Uh, yeah, it's a really sad story about old Phil here. Um, look, uh, without going into too much details, it's just going to be me tonight. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, would you like to play us a song, Frank? I would love to. Um, this song uh, is a song I wrote recently, and it's... Strikes me again just how much I seem to listen to Cause last night's text had left me a mess Trying to figure out if what I think makes sense Cause word of mouth says I'm chosen From your lips slapped unspoken now if only I had the power to such a range of songs that in that my child So here we go My head again and again The question begs why 
What do I have to do for you? For you to tell me how much you love my touch and tell me just why it keeps you up at night. Isn't it right? Oh, but lately I've been busy at work and I have been busy at flirting. Why I just can't complain. Cause baby, that's the game. But you're the only thing that's on my mind. Baby, I'm running out of time. Baby, you lost track. Baby, you let me strip it back if you want. Roll on me if at all to say it's true And I'll be acoustic for you And if you want my day You can lay me clear And I may do Be an acoustic for you now 3 a.m. at it again I got away Wish I'd stay next to you This time I've been searching for my soul You've been out there burning up a hater but Let me tell you, it seems to look back into time When you picked it up because you didn't need those signs but Maybe I was fine, but baby My message changed, so I'm going crazy Over you, we said something nice, something I like But here's a little tune for you If you want me, roll on me at all to say it's true I'll be acoustic for you and if you want my day You can let me clear And I may do Being acoustic for you and if it's all too much Maybe I misjudged Oh, could you go Go out and fly on your own But baby, know that I want you by my side So won't you let me be acoustic for you Oh, and I know that time goes on And over heights, you moved on But I know you love simplicity And I love your work with you and me So darling, please just do me and say When I see you got the sun Into the darkness I wait An empty city straight well, it's here in the silence And my dreams have a license to run free well, Let me tell you, the thought of you is out of the But the thought of us is inviolable Oh, darling, can't you say uh, Well, maybe some words and a melody Is gonna help you to Who want me if at all to say it's true? I'll be acoustic for you. And if you want my day, you can let me clear. And I may do be an acoustic for you. And if it's all too much, and baby, I misjudge. No, you could go, go on and fly on your own. The baby, no, that I want you by my side. So won't you, no, won't you, no, won't you let me be acoustic for you? That was great. Thank you so much. That was fantastic. So do you, you've been on tour, teenage tours through high schools. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been pretty incredible getting to meet a lot of different people from, uh, from your same demographic, but in completely different circumstances. Do you feel like you're a better person? Because of it and meeting all these people, 100%. You, you just get to see um, how other people live in different communities and it's really inspiring to see, you know, What are the works. teen groupies like? The teen groupies, the teen groupies have been absolutely awesome. I mean, um, over the over the course of the tour, um, social media played a big part of it, and you know, really connecting with those people has just been incredible. Um, and you you get to hear a lot from people as well, and find out a lot of stories. So it's uh, it's touching to listen to. So you're the generation that uh, is doing everything kind of over social media. Are you more careful or less careful? with your kind of private stuff? I think more careful knowing the stories that can come out of social media if you use it wrong. Um, it's, a, it's a fine art to, to manage what's up there and what's not. Um, you've got to be careful and I think now more than ever when everything's connected and everything's out there, 
you got to be careful. <laughs> so you like to keep a bit of mystery? Just a little bit. I think it's quite nice <laughs> for once. And where can people find your stuff? Uh, all over YouTube, iTunes. You just search up Frank Dixon on YouTube or iTunes. Um, and I've got an Instagram and Snapchat account as well, which is uh, at Frankie D. Of course you do. You have all of the things. <laughs> the millennials. <laughs> you are coming to get us all. Our guest today is Geraldine Quinn, a legend of the Australian comedy and cabaret scene, a lifelong Bowie fan and a human who's still alive. Geraldine! Hello! Hi. How wonderful to be here. Oh, it's wonderful to see you. How have you been recently? Tell me. Recently? Well, uh, the apocalypse has put a bit of a crimp on things. Um, if, if it's up to me to assist in repopulating the earth, good luck, because I'm nearly 42. So I don't think there's a lot of um, there's a lot going on. And how's more. the life of a musician in these straightened times? Um, look, I, I thought it was a challenge to pull an audience before, uh, but now it's, it's certainly well, at least the, the ones that I do find tend to be too busy um, sloughing off, shedding skin, and and throwing up, and I can't, don't have to take it personally. <laughs> <laughs> that that is a good. That's all I've ever wanted as a as a performer is to just not take things personally. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a welcome change. And how uh, how's your family? Uh, dead. Ah. <laughs> all of them. Yeah. Well, that's convenient. No birthday presents to buy. No, no. Which is a shame because I do. You know, there were so many. There were so very many birthdays. But they like the outdoors. And for once, being a hermit, being inside with all those white painted windows, I was like. Who's the winner now? Definitely you. Geraldine, would you like to play a game with us? Sure. It's called What's in This Can? <laughs> okay. What's in, what's in, what's in the can? Uh, so uh, we're, we're going to choose uh, this can. Right. And you're allowed to look at it, uh, smell it, uh, tap it, listen to it, whatever you like. And then you tell me what's in this can. And we uh, find out what's in the can. Okay. I'm getting some liquid. Um, I'm feeling that it's got a, quite a viscosity to it from that sound. So I reckon it's probably a syrup, a fruit syrup. I'm guessing we're going for peaches. I'll be specific, I'll say peaches. All right. Uh, what's in this can? Oh my God, it better not be chum. Oh no, what is it? Let's find out. <laughs> oh! <laughs> mm. That is not peaches. Sugar. That's tomato soup. Oh, yeah, no. And <laughs> you just ate it with a fork. I did. <laughs> That's the right way to eat tomato soups. Don't tell me how to be, <laughs> is the answer for that. Uh, well, thank you very much, Geraldine. Is there anything you're plugging at the moment? Um, pretty much just the podcast, uh, Bang on the Strillers podcast. So I've been talking to some cabaret and uh, burlesque people. Strillers is an old Polari word for piano. So, um, yeah, so I've been talking to people like uh, Mike McLeish and Becky Lou and Queenie Van Der Zandt and Gillian Cosgrave, some really good people. Well, I know you're a big podcast fan, so I'm sure you've got it down pat, all the interviewing, excellent. It is, it's the editing. It's the sitting there and just kind of going, oh my God, how many, what do I need to do here? How do I need to make this work? And I never edit my podcast. Did That's you? the secret. <laughs> oh, no, I want Just low production uh, values all the way. Record, put them online. No, I kind of, I feel the urge to redraft and just sort of tighten stuff up a bit. Well, we'll put a link to it in our, in our credits at That'd the end of the awesome. day. That'd be awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Geraldine. And would you like to play something for us? I would. I have no family left, but I, I did write a song for my niece on the occasion of her 10th birthday, oh, which seems appropriate. Wonderful. Do you want to go play it over there? Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you, Alice. No worries. What a special day. You are turning ten today With goblins and party pies And lots of pretty things Look at all your friends And the presents that they send Your whole family is here So everybody is see Here comes the birthday cake But before you make a wish There's something your auntie Cherry wants to say On this moment everything's done Your body at 14 is 
so much worse than Halloween It changes shape and starts to leak And makes you do mad things Your twenties, they're okay But from your thirties you'll decay Your joints and back and brains will go Along with all your dreams And as you reflect back on this day Back in shaped ice cream cake Will represent the hopeless and betrayed That's from this moment Our next section is a way to make a connection to the outer world and show we're up to date by screening wacky videos we've found online. Things that happen on the internet are news now, which makes our jobs way easier and is a cheap way to avoid having to make another three minutes of television. The internet is a jungle and it's a wild world out there. Let's have a look at some of the most viral videos of this week. Oh. Ah. Oh man, don't you wish that was the worst of your problems? Life was a lot simpler when the hardest moment of your day was a rabid mammal trying to claw your eyes out, am I right? Well, that's a little light-hearted laugh for a late night crowd, but let's move on to something a little more serious as I cut over to Roger for the weather report. Roger? Else, as you can see there's some heavy firestorms moving in from the east, while a low pressure system drives radioactive mutants down from the north. If we're lucky, the two will collide slightly above the populated zone and you'll have some really spectacular flaming radioactive mutants to watch out for in the early hours of the weekend. If they collide earlier, it'll just be normal toxic ash winds, so wear a raincoat out and bring oxygen. Sounds messy. Well, it's a good thing we're behind the wall because following a couple of weeks of acid rain, we've got the double whammy of acid floods and giant cane toads who've just learned how to use weapons. So if you're over in the chaos zone, you probably want to be polishing up your combat armor, and if you can, stay inside. The UV levels are fatal, and if the battle toads don't get you, the sunburn will. Sounds like business as usual, guys, and thanks for that, Roger. I'm here in the studio with Donald, who's been studying the recent battle toad evolution and has a few things to say about the horrific creatures. Donald. Hi, Alice. Yes, it, look, it was only a matter of time before the battle toads developed opposable thumbs and a taste for vengeance. Uh, predictable, really. Look, you, we had the cybernetic warrior beetles. They were a big problem. Everybody remembers those. Um, and we thought, what's the best way to fix them? The soldiers could do nothing. None of our bombs worked. Battle toads. Um, and, well, we don't have cybernetic beetles anymore. Well, we don't have cybernetic beetles, which is a good thing, but we do have battle toads with opposable thumbs and we a thirst a for lot. human yeah. flesh. So, um, any solutions for that? Anything? Look, hindsight is twenty twenty, Alice. Um, I will be the first to take the blame for that because it was my idea. But um, I think we could sort out the battle toads with a larger, more battley organism. Thinking some kind of psychic octopus, perhaps uh, a flying shark of some sort. Thanks for that, Donald. I've just got a report in from our traffic guys who are telling me from the copter that traffic has been pretty heavy on the interstate since Canberra fell, with people leaving the ruins of our capital city. So you should use back roads where you can to avoid delays and steer clear of the Great Ocean Road as it's just fallen completely into the sea. Remember, your show might be the only news someone gets all day, so you have to keep people up to date with important things like the weather and the traffic, but also you want your viewers to be up to date for the water cooler conversation tomorrow. Let's head over now to our Hollywood reporter, Roger. Hey Roger, what's the haps over in Tinseltown? 
Hi Alice, it's glamour and glitz in the city of sin and rumours are swirling with Brad and Angelina publicly agreeing that they would seek marriage counselling and become Brangelina again for the sake of the kids. But before we could confirm that, we got new news that the Brangelina have fully split again into three smaller celebrity elements of Brr, Ange and Lena, forged in the heart of this dying binary star system. Who'll keep their Hollywood house? Who gets to eat the kids? Meanwhile, George Clooney, America's sweetheart, is continuing to work with mad scientists at the UN to try and convert raw charisma into cooked nutrition for the starving children of America. Nicole Kidman's been seen out and about glowing, which has sparked another round of pregnancy rumours, as well as speculation that she might just have walked too close to the radiation zone. That, that would explain her face. Taylor Swift has written a new song about the monster crocodile who stole her heart and a source close to Tay Tay has told us that the song's autobiographical and might have something to do with one of the Hemsworth clones who Taylor was seen smooching at a recent red carpet event. Which clone? Only he knows. They're identical and there are thousands of them. And to think, once we all thought you could never get enough Hemsworth and now they're chanting satanic verses at midnight, repeatedly breaking up with Taylor Swift and constantly stealing electricity from our overloaded grid to fuel the incubators that are spawning ever more Hemsworths to join them in their well-oiled, shirtless, insanely attractive but undeniably worrying Hemsworth district. The only upside is that we'll never run out of Avengers movies. Thanks for that Hollywood update, Roger. And now to the front lines with our on-the-ground battle reporter, Roger, for our battle report. Roger? Hi Alice, I'm here at the front lines of the robot war and I have to say things are looking pretty grim. Children crying, everyone confused about why there are children here. The cyborgs have finally taken Facebook and the psychological warfare techniques are merciless. Our soldiers are helpless in the face of humiliating chat transcripts dredged up from their teen years and our female soldiers are being machine gunned with literally thousands of dick pics and mean comments about their personal appearance at an unsustainable rate. There are just not enough sassy comebacks in the arsenal, morale is very low. And what about the hacking attempt from our side? A group of elite gamer hackers successfully broke into the robot mainframe only a few days ago but were lured into a flame war by a feminati sock puppet account and are still caught in the comments section calling everyone fat. Our only hope now is the rumour that the robots are running low on battery power and need to find a wall socket soon with some of them as low as 12% battery. Everyone's praying for a ceasefire. Grim news. And all our thoughts are with the boys and girls on the front line, and I do mean boys and girls. Since the robots attacked, deploying embarrassing teenage chat transcripts, our only defence has been the prepubescent. Go with God, kiddies. Some late night shows are serious, and some are funny, but all of them are current. We want to stay in touch with our fans, so we have a feedback session where we read wacky feedback from our online aficionados. Here are a few. This is from Chris in the Hemsworth district. Thanks for introducing us to What's in the Can, made opening the last one a bloody riot. Thanks, Chris. Uh, this one says, not sure what Alice was wearing when she was covering the hospital blackout. It's called self-respect and you don't need to wait for to be airdropped in. Love the show. That's from Jason in the slums district. Thanks, Jason. This is from Steve476 in the abandoned zone. Love the segment on properly skinning the family pet. I kept warm and stylish and we ate like kings for a week. Thanks for that, Steve. And this is from Sexy Girls Near You in former Russia, which says uh, get 50 to 75 percent off brand new Ray-Ban protective goggles by clicking the link. That's um, spam. Could we not have that? Thank you. Uh, this last one is from Barbara in Whittlesea. How can the grid still be up but they can't send help? We're dying slowly. We have nothing left. No food, no hope. Even the children have run out of tears. Love the show. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Barbara. I'll be sending you a pack from the show which includes a hat, a pen and no food. Late night news isn't always fun and laughter. We deal with some serious issues. Next up, I'm going to show you a segment that deals with a serious social issue in a responsible way. With our investigative report, Are Radioactive Mutants Sexist? Just because you're a radioactive mutant doesn't mean you're not brainwashed by the patriarchy. Sure, they're mindless subhuman denizens of the screaming wastes, but have you ever felt like you're being chased slightly more slowly by a radioactive mutant just because you're a woman? I'm going to talk to a victim of radioactive mutant sexism. We blurred out her face for anonymity. I was running away from a bunch of radioactive mutants with my dad and brothers, and I just got the sense that the radioactive mutants weren't taking me seriously. 
I had to kill twice as many radioactive mutants as the boys before any of the slavery mutant freaks even tried to kill me. They just kept focusing on the men like they had in their brains were heaps more worth eating. Is, is that, that they think women's brains are smaller? It's the worst day of my life. I had to come to terms with the, not only the loss of my brother, my father, but my faith in the system. Heartbreaking. We tried to talk to a radioactive mutant for comment, but he refused to say anything coherent. <laughs> Enlightening. In the studio today, we have scientist Roger here to talk to us about the microaggressions that you might be missing in among all the macroaggression. Roger, tell us about these radioactive mutants. Well, look, Alice, what you've got to remember is that they used to be human, okay? And the humanity is gone. The, the sense of goodwill is gone, but the patriarchy is a hard bastard to get rid of. So that's hanging in there. So they're refusing to uh, attack women in the same numbers as they're attacking men. Right. Do you think that's the patriarchy at work or is there something about women that they're not willing to approach or? Yeah, look, the problem is mutants are mostly guys, okay? And so you've got this environment of toxic radioactive masculinity um, and it's not self-correcting because they aren't going after women, so we're getting more guy mutants. So it's more of a, of a mutant boys club. And uh, look, the situation is a tricky one. It is a tricky one. Could you propose any solutions? For I would honestly, I would tell the mutants just to get over themselves. I would if, you had, if you could talk directly to our mutant watchers right now, what would you say? Look, you mutants, you radioactive mutants, uh, you're overthinking it. You're going around thinking, how should I uh, catch and eat and, and mutant this female survivor? What you should be thinking is, how do I catch and eat and mutant this human survivor? Okay? Humans all, we're all feeble sacks of meat who've long overstayed our, our welcome on planet Earth. It's your world now. Male, female, we're all protein. Get over yourselves and just eat us already. A good message. Yeah. So, that's the kind of thing you're looking to deal with. A moment of serious reflection in the context of otherwise light entertainment. You really can change the world. But you need to balance that kind of heavy stuff out with something lighter, maybe a diet or fashion segment. Let's have a look at how that might work. As we pass the winter equinox and start looking forward to spring and summer, it's time to start feeling insecure about our bodies again. Let's do some real talk. Bikini season is just around the corner with a sock full of coins waiting to hit you on the head and steal all your self-esteem. You might assume that all you need for a bikini bod body is a torso and a neck, but what we mean when we say bikini body is the kind of body women have in cartoons of women. The kind of tits to ass ratio that'll give you significant back problems, but hey, guys will be falling all over themselves to support your head and neck when you look that good. Avoid outdated fad diets like the Master Cleanse and Cabbage Soup Diet. They're so 90s and will slow your metabolism. Instead, try eating 75 calories of protein and a berry 14 times a day. You'll never feel hungry and you'll never stop thinking about food or your body. Save one of those 75 calorie mini 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 meals for a treat. Yes, you can indulge yourself with three quarters of a square of dark, organic, fair trade, locally sourced, unrefined, sugar and dairy free cacao lat. Or just chew on a raw bean for the most authentic chocolate-esque experience. Chewing a cacao bean without milk or sugar is like sex without the boring foreplay or tenderness. Just a luscious hit of bitterly angry disappointment. Try substituting high calories foods with low calorie alternatives. Instead of ice cream, try frozen yogurt. Eventually you won't even be able to remember the difference and it'll seem adequate. Instead of high sugar fruit juice, try putting a slice of apple or banana into lukewarm tap water. Instead of pasta, try zucchini pasta, which is where you just cut zucchini into pasta shapes as though that was a thing. Pop some tomato-based pasta sauce on top in a desperate attempt to mask the horrific failure of zucchini to be anything like pasta in either taste or texture. If you freeze the pasta, it makes another great substitute for ice cream. Or maybe just play What's in this can? What's in, what's in, what's in the can?
And that's our show. And our show about our show. Tune in next week for more of exactly the same or follow my YouTube channel for a behind the scenes breakdown of all the gossip from our bunker. The backstabbing, the food rationing and the games. It's always what's in that can. Is it radiation or poisoning or an STD? We can't tell you on the television, but the internet doesn't have rules about showing weeping genital sores. If you like the show or the show about the show, see a show about the making of the show about the show on Vice. Follow me on Twitter, and if you're alive out there, drop us a line or parachute in a ration pack. We don't have many cans left, and the ones we have, we don't know what's in them. What's in that can? I'm well-known late-night comedic television show host Alice Fraser, and this is About Tonight, the About About Tonight episode.